Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the eighth HS2 update from the Chiltern Society. I'm very grateful to James Cadle and the Chess Valley U3A for hosting today's meeting. HS2 approaches the Chilterns via the 2.1 mile long Kong Valley Viaduct across the Kong Valley Regional Park near Dat Denham. This will be the longest viaduct in the UK, yet it will take trains just 40 seconds to traverse it. It crosses a number of lakes, the Grand Union Canal, the River Colne, as well as Moore Hall Road and the A412 North Orbital Road. Here we are looking north from Harville Road in Harefield across the viaduct south abutment. The launching girder has reached the edge of the last of the lakes and construction of the viaduct will be completed later this year. This is looking south across that lake, Harefield number two lake. And this shows the viaduct launching girder working its way across the lake. It weighs 700 tonnes and moves methodically from one pier to the next. The viaduct is supported by 56 piers between spans that are up to 80 metres long. These are the largest piers which take the viaduct over the lakes. They weigh 1800 tonnes and each took nine months to build. And this was the view across the, the lake when it was home to the Hillingdon Outdoor Activity Centre. This is now closed and it hopes to relocate to Broadwater Lake, another of the lakes in the Kong Valley Regional Park. Earlier this year, the viaduct crossed the Grand Union Canal. The public footpath, which forms part of the London Loop on the south side of the canal, has been temporarily diverted onto a pontoon over the canal. This is looking west along the canal towpath. Both footpaths were closed for a short time as construction passed overhead and the canal itself was closed for five weeks temporarily reopening when no work was taking place uh, unfortunately every time i went to take pictures of work taking place uh, nothing was happening each precast deck segment weighs up to 140 tons and they are installed on each side of the pier in turn to maintain a balance. The hoardings surrounding this side have now been removed and clearing up work has started. And here we are looking uh, back towards the Grand Union Canal. The next stage will be for the pontoons to be removed and then the footpath will be permanently diverted under the viaduct. Now we're looking north as the viaduct moves across Save Lake and on towards Moorhall Road. And this is the uh, crossing over Moorhall Road, uh, and the viaduct then moves on to Corder Lake. The fish were removed from the lake before construction commenced and have been relocated to Broadwater Lake. Sadly, there will be no more fishing in Corder Lake. This is looking west as the viaduct passes Denham Water Ski Club. 
you can see Denham Airfield at the top of the picture. This is looking across the lake towards the viaduct. Uh, I must say it doesn't look as bad as I expected. A new clubhouse is built across the lake from the viaduct uh, and you can still see the old clubhouse uh, right near the viaduct. This is the same section from below as the viaduct approaches the North Orbital Road at uh, West Hyde. A parapet pat is being added here. Uh, there will also be sound deflecting barrier, overhead catenary and high voltage power cables, which will be added later. Beyond the North Orbital Road, the viaduct reaches the North Abutment. Uh, from, from here to the Chilton Tunnel portal is the only section of the route in Hertfordshire. This is looking south back across the viaduct uh, as it crosses the Kong Valley Regional Park and you can make out the launching girder at the southern end of the viaduct. Looking along the Tile House Lane cutting under Tile House Lane overbridge and onto the West Hyde embankment leading onto the Kong Valley viaduct. Uh, this area will be known as the Kong Valley Western Slopes and it's been landscaped using the 3 million cubic meters of spoil that were removed from the Chilton Tunnel, as well as that from all the tunnel ventilation shelves. The first of the three factories built here has been removed. It was the slurry treatment plant and it was used to process the slurry excavated from the tunnels. Now that the tunnelling has been completed, its job is done. Uh, next to go will be the tunnel lining segment factory. That too has finished its job. And the remaining factory will be the viaduct precast factory, but that will have soon finished its work too. And looking north from the towards the tunnel portal and you can quite clearly see the porous portals as a train enters a tunnel at one end it generates a pressure wave which can produce noise at the other end of the tunnel the porous portal slows the build-up of the pressure waves in the tunnel and hopefully reduces the noise This shows the close proximity of the N25 between junctions 16 and 17. And you can see a side view of the porous portals. And this is an impression of what the portal will look like eventually. Looking across the North Orbital Road towards the Chilton South Tunnel Portal uh, a construction compound. Crosses show the area we'll be looking at now from the M25 across the Central Chilterns to Wendover. This shows the four tunnel ventilation shafts across the Chilterns. There will also be an intervention shaft near the North Tunnel Portal at South Heath. These would also be used for emergency access during the operation of the railway.
This is the Chalf and St Peter vent shaft in Chesham Lane, and this shows the shaft as it was at the last update in January. Uh, and this is it as it is now. Uh, construction of the headhouse itself is complete and the tower crane has been removed. Uh, all the shafts will have a, have a headhouse uh, across the top of the shaft. These will be single storey and will be the main building seen on the surface. Although technically they are single storey, they are much bigger than we expected. Uh, and this is on the left of the picture, this is the, the plenum, essentially the vent outlet. And this is an impression of, of what the uh, what the site will look like once it's completed. And you can see the two buildings, uh, the, the two main buildings there. Chesham Lane is on the right. Chalfonts and Giles vent shaft is situated at the top of Bottom House Farm Lane. And access to the shaft is via a half mile long temporary hall road from the A413. Uh, and this is the shaft as it was at the last update. You can quite clearly see the basement. And this is it as it is now. The headhouse building is complete and the tower crane has been removed. The third building is a, an auto transformer station. And these are the three buildings that will be visible above ground level. At the bottom of the shaft, we're looking from the upline London bound tunnel towards the downline Birmingham bound one. This is where the air will be extracted as the trains pass through. The tunnels are 26 metres below ground, less than half the depth of the Chalfont St Peter shaft. And this is the top of the shaft itself. So this is where the air will be sucked up. Uh, and then into the basement. And we're looking from the from underneath the plenum uh, towards the shaft. It's huge and it's rather like the turbine halls at power stations. And this is where the fans will be housed. Looking north across Bottom House Farm Lane, this is an impression of what it will all look like. The Amersham French shaft is situated in Wilden Lane, west of Amersham Hospital. The A404 goes to High Wycombe and the A413 turns right towards Great Missenden. This is the shaft itself as it was at the last update. And now you can see construction of the headhouse well underway. In the foreground, you can see the plenum under construction. The restricted size of the site means that the headhouse is circular rather than the barn-like design at the other shafts.
The layout of the site means that in due course it will be not be seen from the A404 once hedges and trees are planted. But uh, unfortunately, I think it'll always be clearly visible from Weldon Lane. This is an impression of what the shaft will look like. The original design was controversial to say the least. Uh, following a consultation process, this is the final design. Not what we wanted, but a big improvement on the original. Again, it will be single storey. The little Missenden vent shaft is alongside the dual carriageway section of the A413. Again, the view at the last update. Uh, we're looking west across the vent shaft uh, and beyond the A413 you can see the River Misbourne at the top of the picture. And this is as it is now. Looking north towards the site from the A413. And construction of the head house here is now well underway. And the plenum can be seen just in front of the head house itself. And this is an impression of what the head house will look like. Once, once the planting is completed, the shaft will hardly be visible from the road. Seventeen hundred trees will be planted here, some twenty different species. The Chesham Road shaft near South Heath is the last of the shafts. As it is a, an intervention shaft only, it will not have any fans, so will not need a basement. Uh, this is the view of the shaft at the last update. And this is as it is now. Effectively, there are two houses here, one either side of the top of the shaft. I visited the site yesterday, so you couldn't have more up-to-date pictures. The auto transformer station is in the foreground with the two head houses behind. They are both the same and will contain the same equipment with one acting as a backup. It won't be uh, quite as far above the ground. The, once the site is filled in, uh, the, uh, the ground level will effectively be raised up to the level of the bottom of the doors of the head houses you can see in front of you. Technically, again, single storey, but uh, to me, that's a three storey building. It's difficult to capture the size of the building. They're divided, both buildings are divided up into, into huge rooms. And this is the top of the shaft between the two buildings. Uh, and this is actually the roof uh, of that uh, link between the head houses right at the top of the shaft. Here we can see the North Tunnel portal, just over half a mile from the Chesham Road shaft. As the first of the TBMs, named Florence, approached the Chilton Tunnel North portal at South Heath, a new sinkhole appeared on private land next to Sibley's Coppice, 
just south of Frith Hill. As they used to say about buses, you wait ages for one, then two come along together. And sure enough, another sinkhole appeared five days later. A combination of disturbance from tunnelling and potentially recent rainfall uh, weakened pre-existing weak spots, which then collapsed to form the sinkholes. The holes were repaired by compaction of topsoil and backfilling. The area was then monitored to ensure the ground remained stable, and it would seem that no permanent damage was done. This is the north portal as it was from the last update. And this is as it is now. The first TBM, Florence, digging the up London bound tunnel, broke through at the end of February. Cecilia arrived safely in March. Between them, the TBMs removed 3 million cubic metres of spoil. And they installed 112,000 concrete tunnel wall segments. The TBMs are now being dismantled and scrapped. And they're gradually moved out of the tunnel one section at a time. This is Cecilia's cutting head. Uh, according to the contractors, the typical drive for a TBM is five to six kilometres. The challenges in completing a 16 kilometre drive should not be underestimated. They worked around the clock for nearly every day for almost three years. Uh, and in word, the words of the site foreman here, um, they are knackered. Uh, and it's hard to imagine that this is uh, southbound trains will enter the up tunnel uh, here at 200 miles an hour. Huge amounts of concrete have been used here and it's all produced by the batching plant at the south portal and then transported by road a round trip of over 40 miles for each load. Uh, a batching plant is now under construction here to supply the next section of the route and for the walkways that will run the length of the tunnels. The contractor, as far as here, is a line, a joint venture made up of Buig, Volker Fitzpatrick and Sir Robert Alp McAlpine. They will now take over some of the sites to the north from EKFB, the contractors for the rest of the route across Buckinghamshire. That joint venture is made up of Effarge, Kia, Ferrovial Construction and Baron Nuttall. The route continues in the South Heath cutting under a series of bridges. <clears throat> in this section, these are all over bridges, meaning that they cross over the railway line. The route has been uh, designed, route alignment has been designed to enable speeds up to 225 miles an hour north of the Chalkman Tunnel. The first bridges take public footpaths over the line. And uh, you can see Potter Road to the east of the route. <clears throat> Leather Lane Overbridge is the first of the three road bridges. Offline construction means that the bridge will be built to the south of the lane, which will be diverted over the bridge once construction is complete. 
uh, and then the lane will be diverted over the bridge. Leather Lane Overbridge is the first of the three road bridges. Offline construction means that the bridge will be built to the south of the lane, which will be diverted over the bridge once construction is complete. This avoids temporary closure of the road. This is the last site handed over to Align. Uh, we will wait to see if they can come up with an acceptable design for the overbridge. South Heath Midpoint Auto Transformer Station will be along the, uh, alongside the track just north of the overbridge. This is public right of way, PROW TLE2 and uh, the Bowood Lane overbridges. Construction of the Bowood Lane overbridge is online and so the lane is closed until it is completed. Looking south along the route towards uh, PROW TLE2 over, over bridge, uh, which you can see through the arch, which is conveniently placed there. Um, they were actually um, concrete pouring here for the deck, constructing the deck of the bridge. Public footpath that runs alongside Bowood Lane remains open and there is a man crossing here. All other footpaths crossing the route in this section are closed during construction. Uh, so this is a vital diversion route for some, including a very popular Chilton Way. Unfortunately, the contractors now want to close the path and we wait to see what alternative route they come up with. Just north of Bowood Lane is the Wendover Dean Viaduct. The south abutment is alongside the remains of Jones Hill Wood. And this is looking west uh, to across the viaduct towards the A413, uh, which you can see running across the top of the picture. And this is looking in the opposite direction. Uh, Durham Farm was demolished and has been replaced by new buildings a short distance to the west. The viaduct will actually be 415 metres long and it will be up to 20 metres high. This is an HS2 picture looking south along the viaduct. The sections were precast off site before being transported to the site by road. Uh, the 38 steel beams have now completed their 560 mile journey all the way from France where they were made. The viaduct is assembled just to the north of the north abutment and will then be slid out over the piers in three stages. This is the first of the 90 metre long spans being pushed out onto the first pier. This is an impression of what it will all look like. The trains will cross it at 225 miles an hour. According to HS2, the viaduct will be the first major railway bridge in the UK to be built with a double composite structure using significantly less carbon intensive concrete and steel in comparison to a, a more traditional design. The viaduct leaves, uh, the route leaves the viaduct onto the Wendover Dean North Embankment uh, and on into the Rocky Lane Cutting. 
you can see the vehicle maintenance and fuel storage depot to the left of the picture. Wendover Auto Transformer Station will be alongside the track just to the south of Rocky Lane. Construction of Rocky Lane Underbridge is now underway. It is an underbridge which means it will go under the railway. Offline construction means that the road will remain open during construction. And you can just see the two viaducts being assembled at the top and bottom of the picture. And here we're looking south from Rocky Lane towards the uh, Tunnel North Portal, uh, which you can just make out nearly three miles away. North of Rocky Lane, the route moves on to the Small Dean South Embankment. The Small Dean Viaduct is being assembled on the embankment. Early next year, it will be pushed out across the piers in one go. The viaduct will take the route over the A413, the Chiltern Railway and the Small and Small Dean Lane. Uh, you can also see the 400 metre long fully enclosed conveyor system here. Once fully operational, it will move an estimated 1.4 million tonnes of material over the A413 and the Chiltern Railway uh, for use further up the line. Uh, it's expected to save four, some 400 HG mo HGV movements a day over a three and a half year period. Another HS2 picture showing one of the huge viaduct piers that will support the viaduct here. Uh, they have 49 metre deep piled foundations and the Y-shaped precast segments on the top uh, weigh 42 tonnes. The A413 has been diverted slightly around one of the piers. Small Dean Lane is closed during construction and a bridleway diversion allowed cyclists and pedestrians to travel between Wendover and Dunsmore. Alas, that has now been closed and this is the alternative route, uh, not ideal to say the least. A shared foot and cycle path will eventually be delivered alongside the main road as it passes under the viaduct. And this is an impression of what the viaduct will look like. The underside of the viaduct will be just six metres above the road and will be supported by five piers. There will be noise barriers along the top of the viaduct. The route leaves the viaduct onto the Small Dean North Embankment. Uh, and the last of the bridges in the Chilterns will be the Grove Farm Underbridge. The route will then enter the Wendover Green Tunnel. The South Portal will be just south of Backham Lane. Backham Lane will be closed once construction of the tunnel gets underway. A temporary link road is now under construction. And 
This will connect Backham Lane directly with Ellsborough Road. You can see the link road curving round towards Ellsborough Road at the bottom of the picture. Wendover Memorial Woodland is on the right of the picture beyond the sheep piling. And Wendover Station is at the top of the picture. And in the centre is the Ellsborough Road crossing. This is where things start to go wrong. Six houses were demolished here to make way for the tunnel. The road is now closed and has been diverted behind the remaining houses. Yeah, it will reopen on its original alignment once the tunnel is completed. Looking north towards Ellsborough Road, where the tunnel requires excavations going down 18 metres below the existing road level. Beyond, you can see the Bailey Bridge, which takes a diverted road over the route. Giant articulated dump trucks will pass underneath as they may move huge amounts of spoil from the earlier cuttings to be used further up the line, including an embankment at Stoke Mandeville. They will make an estimated 10,000 round trips and none will be on local roads. Underground utility services that run up Ellsborough Road needed to be moved out of the way to allow for the cutting works. Gas, BT and cable TV services have now been diverted over the Bailey Bridge but there were major problems in shifting the electricity cables as well as the mains water and sewerage pipes. The Bailey Bridge is much lower than Ellsborough Road and so there was an issue about getting south sewerage to flow uphill over the, o the A413 and the Chilton Railway line. Uh, to get around this, EKFB implemented a second utility services bridge, which you can see in the foreground, to maintain the altitude and slope of the existing pipes. However, there were delays in moving BT circuits onto the new cables over the Bailey Bridge were which in turn stopped Thames Water from moving their pipes onto the utilities bridge. With increasing pressure from HS2 to get on with the mass haul, EKFB decided to dump to run the dump trucks over the top of Ellsborough Road rather than waiting until they could cut through it. You can see here that the newly erected utilities bridge was dismantled to make way for the dump trucks. The next step was the installation of a temporary concrete slab on top of the road, which was needed to protect the water pipes from the 100 ton weight of the loaded dump trucks. Having created a large hole to install the utility services bridge, Half of it then needed to be filled in to create a ramp down to the concrete slab. And here's a view of the concrete slab and uh, also an uh, overhead electricity cable that needs to be removed. Uh, that should have been easy as new substations have been built on each side of the cutting to serve the remaining houses but alas, they've not been brought into service yet. I hope you're keeping up with all this. The last section of the Hall Road is the ramp down from Ellsborough Road to the Bailey Bridge. Excavating this has been frustrated by the presence of a recently installed underground electricity cable that crosses the trace. That is then now in the process of being removed, but its location means that heavy equipment cannot be used 
and so it's having, having to be done manually. Hopefully the ramp will be excavated by the end of July to allow the haul roads to start being used. Dump trucks will then be operating until the end of the year. Uh, they don't operate over the winter. Creation of the junction between Ellsborough Road and the new diversion route has been fraught, including the need to remove an old electricity substation to improve road safety. Traffic lights are controlling a single carriageway past the site and have been operating since the diversion was brought into use uh, in March. Another complication occurred when EKFB tried to remove a fence post near to the substation. A large lump of concrete was found surrounding a live electricity cable. Alas, UK Power Networks did not consider fixing this to be a priority. And so there's currently no firm date for when this will be resolved. Much to the frustration of the motorists using this busy route. And this shows the Ellsborough Road diversion looking east towards Wendover. And this is the Bailey Bridge taking the diversion over the tunnel. And also uh, it's a diversionary route for the uh, uh, ancient Ridgeway, uh, which used to run up Backham Lane and is now diverted over the, uh, the, over the Bailey Bridge at the back. The Wendover, Wendover Tunnel continues north of uh, It will be a three quarter mile long uh, and built by excavating a cutting in the ground, forming a tunnel box from precast concrete segments and then covering it over with landscaping. This is what construction of a cut and cover tunnel looks like. This is the Chipping Warden Tunnel in Northamptonshire, already built by EKFB. Last year, HS2 announced that there will be a change of contractor here. EKFB will continue with the cutting part and a line will then take over and complete the construction process. It does seem a bit strange when EKFB have already successfully built this cut and cover tunnel further up the line. Alongside the route, Wendover Cricket Club Pavilion is now perilously perched on the edge of a cliff. Here we're looking north towards the tunnel north portal. Excavation is being tightly controlled by the Environment Agency due to the potential impact on the uh, Coombe Hill Aquifer. Considerations include reducing the flow of water into the Western Turville Reservoir, site of special scientific interest, SSSI, uh, and diversion of groundwater flows, increasing the flood risk to Stoke Mandeville and Aylesbury. Here you can see the special excavators that have been brought in to construct a 30 meter deep, 650 meter long underground tanking wall to stop the groundwater getting into the Wendover North cutting. The Environment Agency will be monitoring the impact of the wall on water flows before giving permission for the full excavation of the North cutting and the Green Tunnel. 
Currently, the wall goes as far north as the roundabout on the Wendover Bypass, but there is an expectation that it will need to be extended further to the boundary of the Chilton's AOMB at Nationally Lane. Based on EKFB's 2020 project plan, the Green Tunnel construction has now been delayed by about two years and it remains to be seen how much longer it will take to resolve the aquifer issues. I'm very grateful to Murray Cook for his help in summarising the problems the contractors are having here and there have been other issues as well which we just couldn't fit in. The route leaves the Chilterns, passing under Nashley Road Overbridge uh, and makes its way on towards Stoke Mandeville. You can see most of the pictures I've used by visiting HS2 Photo Diary on the Chiltern Society website. This shows the impact at a number of locations across the Chilterns and is constantly updated. There are also links to various videos, including a virtual fly through along the route from Denham to Calvert uh, beyond Aylesbury. I'm very grateful to Robert Urquhart for flying me up and down the route between Denham and Calvert. I'm also grateful to the contractors for their cooperation and for allowing me access to many of the sites. They really couldn't be more helpful. And thank you also to all who have contributed to this update. The next update, the 9th, will be on January the 18th, 2025. And I hope to see you then. Thank you.